Redundant. It's a tough word for any worker to hear. The job they have held is no longer there. The income that has put food on the table and taken the children on outings is disappearing. And as our economy shrinks, people are facing redundancy in increasing numbers. Here in the circuit, we have not been immune to this. Many of you will already know that Nexus, our cafe in Central Hall, has had to close for the, for the moment and its workers are being made redundant. This is how we hope to weather the storm so that we can recreate the jobs and reopen the cafe when the situation picks up again. It looks as though many people are going to struggle with employment issues over the autumn and the winter. And as churches, we respond to that as best as we can. Deprivation and poverty are horrible. So we need to pray for people who are out of work. We need to keep up our support for food banks and other projects. Yet we may feel helpless really in the face of these levels of unemployment. What can we do as a church? We can't really create jobs or at least only a very few. But as I, as I listen to people telling their stories, it's often the sense of being undervalued that really hurts. So often we begin a conversation with someone by asking, what do you do? It's hard to reply, I'm between jobs at the moment or I'm looking for work, because many people feel that the value of their contribution to society is directly related to their paid employment. As a church, as the people of God, a big part of our response to this pressure is to remind ourselves and others what really matters about human beings, where our true value lies. Jesus told the story about work and workers. There was a rich man with a vineyard and at harvest time he needed extra hands. So he went to the town marketplace early in the morning where people were waiting and hoping to find a day's work. Come and work for me, he said, and promised them fair pay. He did the same mid-morning and dinner time, afternoon and even late in the afternoon, just an hour before sunset. When the time came to pay the workers, those who arrived last were paid first and they received a whole day's wage. Those who had worked all day were over the moon However much were they going to receive? They were angry and disappointed when they too received a fair day's pay. Jesus' story can be understood in many ways, but for me, one of the really important things is that Jesus tells us to value everyone equally, no matter how much work they are able to do in the course of the day. The story offers a different perspective on what really matters and insists that the real value in life comes from who we are as children of God, irrespective of what amount or what sort of work we are, we are able to do in the day. So what can we do as a church? We can tell people, loud and clear, that God values them and loves them. All of us are precious in God's sight, and nothing can take that away from any of us. This week, our prayer comes from the Theology of Work project. Let us pray. Lord, help us to remember that work is the principal way in which we provide for our material needs and the needs of others. That it helps to maintain our social services and leisure. Help us to remember that work is for people, not people for work that money, machines and materials are things, while workers, suppliers and customers are people. Help us to remember that in our type of society, those who cannot find work feel their dignity is diminished. Help us to remember that life is more than work. So let us pray for those who seek work but cannot find it, 
for those who overwork and neglect others, for those who should work but avoid it, for those who do work but resent it, for those who exploit work and demean it. Let us pray for efficient production, honest marketing and responsible use of resources, for more justice in the sharing of this world's goods in our own community and between nations, for the unemployed, their families and other victims of economic forces, for all Christians at work, that they may look on their employment as ministry and feel supported in it by their local church, for the whole world as it faces the challenge of change. Amen.